Hello everyone, happy September. In this video, I'm gonna speak you through all the books that I read in August, but first I wanted to get into the stats. I read a total of 3,532 pages, with 89% of this being physical copies and 11% on my Kindle. Every single book I read this month was between 300 and 500 pages, and my top moods were emotional, light-hearted and hopeful, so there's definitely some gushing romances in there. 100% of the books that I read were fiction, and my top genres were romance and contemporary. Now, let's get into the specific books that I read. That should do. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of August. Just quickly before we get started though, I just wanted to point out that I didn't do a June and July wrap up and that is completely my fault. I was just trying to figure out a schedule for my YouTube channel. Obviously I only post once a week, so a quarter of my videos a month would just be wrap ups alone. So obviously I didn't want to take up too much time on my YouTube just for wrap ups, but now I have figured it out. I have figured everything out for you guys. So we will get back to our normal monthly wrap ups. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about all my August reads. So stay tuned for that. So the first book that I read in August was Twisted Hate by Anna Huang, and I rated this book a 3.5 star. This is the third book in the Twisted series by Anna Huang, and it follows Josh and Jules, who are the brother and best friend of Ava from the first book. Josh and Jules have always hated each other. They've always been enemies, they've never liked each other. Obviously they've been forced together their whole lives through Ava, their best friend and sister. This book definitely isn't my favourite of the series, but it has false proximity, workplace romance, enemies to lovers, and friends with benefits. Literally what more could you want? Not only in this book, but also in her other books, I really enjoy how Anna Huang really gets into the backstory of her characters. She really makes them feel like real people, so it's not just romance based, you really get an insight as to who they are as people as well, individually as well as together, and I was interested in both of their lives out of the romance and in the romance as well, which is really cool. And one thing I love about the Twisted series specifically is how things sort of overlap. So at the end of Twisted Games, something happens and they're like, where's Jules and Josh? And then you find out where Jules and Josh was in this book. Oh my goodness. Amazing. I feel like three and a half stars for me is like an average rating. I enjoyed it. I would recommend it, but definitely wasn't my favourite in comparison to others. So the next few books in this video I read in my Realistically Read With Me For A Week video. So if you want to watch me read them in real time, definitely check that video out. But the next one is Bad Girl Reputation by L. Kennedy. I also rated this a three and a half star. Wasn't my favourite, I definitely preferred The Good Girl Complex over this, 100 million percent. But this book follows Evan, brother of Cooper from the first book, and Jen who is his childhood best friend. This is a childhood friends to lovers, small town, forced proximity romance. And I just love Avalon Bay and I love Elle Kennedy's writing, I just, I love the world that this is set in. I feel like I've read a couple of second chance romances before, but I've never really acknowledged it as a trope. I knew that I enjoyed it, but I just thought, okay, second chance romance. But I feel like this book really made me fall in love with the trope. This has made me actually seek out buying childhood friends to lovers and second chance romance books. I don't know why. I've never really been a friends to lovers kind of gal, as I've said before. I've always been more inclined to read enemies to lovers books, but this one, for some reason, really made me crave friends to lovers and second chance romance. But I feel like second chance romance has made me like friends to lovers more, if that makes sense. I I don't actually know if that's even a thought process, but apparently it is. So the next book that I read in August was another childhood friends to lovers, and that is Powerless by Elsie Silver. This is the third book in the Chestnut Springs series, which honestly is one of my favourite series at the moment. I love the cowboy vibes, I love just the small town, and just the whole vibe of the series. I feel like Elsie Silver has just done it so well. I rated this book a four and a half star. Wasn't my favourite in the series again, but still absolutely loved every second of reading it. This book follows Jasper and Sloane. Jasper is an NHL hockey player and Sloane is the cousin of the brothers from the first couple of books. So Jasper and Sloane were very close as kids. They were absolutely, they fancied the hell out of each other, but they sort of grew apart when Jasper's had his hockey career, when that sort of took off and they moved apart. She has a life in the city now, so it just sort of didn't speak as much as they would like to. And then the book starts with Sloane's wedding to another man and he's not very nice, he's a horrible man. She doesn't even want to marry him, but she just feels like she has to to impress her dad and just all of this stuff. And then obviously the story progresses into Jasper and Sloane's story. I'm not gonna say much more because it will be a spoiler, but it's just so good. I honestly will say if you're thinking of picking up the Chestnut Spring series and you haven't yet, 100 million percent do. Take this as your sign, pick up Flawless, pick up Heartless, whichever one is next on your list and just read it because this is honestly just, I love it. I've even got my own cowboy boots. I know. It's getting to that point now. I just feel like as well, I really enjoyed watching all the other characters from the other books coming to this one. And then this one did foreshadow the next book in the series, which is Reckless as well. So we sort of got an insight into what that book's gonna be. So just the way that they all connect, the way the characters are joined together, the way they, just the banter in the books, just everything about this series is my 100% favorite. I absolutely love it so much. 
So once I read that one, I kind of wanted a little palette cleanser. I just read two childhood friends to lovers books. I wanted something with no brain power. I was feeling a little bit under the weather. So I wanted something that I could just read with no effort whatsoever. So I went for the fourth Heartstopper novel. You guys will probably know by now what Heartstopper is, but they are little graphic novels about two guys called Charlie and Nick. And you see their journey progress. You see them learn how to deal with being an LGBTQ person in society. And they're just really cute, sweet and wholesome. They're just so well written and well done. Like there's so much jam packed into a graphic novel. You wouldn't think that a graphic novel would be jam packed with this much emotion and this much raw romance and everything because it's literally just pictures and words. You'd think with such little writing there wouldn't be as much depth, but honestly the depth and emotion and just everything in this book is just amazing and just the series overall. One thing that I will say is it is very very cute but it also does touch on some really dark topics as well such as self-harm, eating disorders, abuse and just a lot of other things so obviously definitely take that into consideration you could look at this and think it's the cutest little thing in the world and that you're going to open it and just have a great time but obviously if those topics trigger you definitely steer away from these but i rated this one a three star it wasn't my favorite in the series i feel like i've said that about every book in this video so far but i just really like how it wrapped up and just seeing their relationship progress and i cannot wait for the fifth one that's coming out very very soon the next book that i read in august was the proposal by l Steele. I rated this book a three and a half star and it's a billionaire, enemies to lovers, marriage of convenience, fake dating romance. I mean, what more could you actually want? This book follows Isla, she's a wedding planner, and she ends up planning a wedding for this billionaire called Liam and his future wife. She ends up accidentally breaking up their engagement. I know. In order to get Liam's inheritance, he has to get married. So he forces Isla, the wedding planner, to marry him instead. He's like, you broke up my marriage. You broke up my wedding. You broke up everything. The least you can do is marry me so I can get my inheritance because he had terms and conditions from his dad's will that he had to get married and have a kid in order to gain this money and gain the business. I feel like this is another book that I really enjoyed the characters in. I really enjoyed them both individually and in the relationship. And I feel like the things that Liam did for her had me literally sitting here giggling and kicking my feet to the point where they were like in a restaurant or something and she's vegan. He ordered a vegan dish and made sure that the chef only had vegan stuff in the place because he didn't want meat anywhere near her. And she's like, no, it's fine. Literally, you can eat meat in front of me. I'm just not going to eat it. And he's like, no, you shouldn't even have to deal with meat being around you. <sighs> I mean, I'm a meat eater. I literally eat burgers every day, but I just thought that was so cute. I just love it. I just feel like the power that rich people have in books is just so funny to me. I just, I don't know. I just feel like I love looking at rich men throw their money at everything to impress a woman. It's just like a little guilty pleasure. My one criticism of this book though, which is probably why I didn't rate it any higher, was that I feel like he fell for her a little bit too quick. So obviously at the start, she literally breaks up his engagement. She breaks up his marriage. She breaks it everything up. And he absolutely despises her. They literally couldn't even think about being in the same room with each other. And obviously he was forcing her to get married, but he actually didn't like her at all. They, he genuinely had no romantic undertones to it. He actually hated her. But then literally a couple of chapters in, he'd already fallen head over heels for her. So I just feel like it was a little bit too quick because I feel like sometimes you get the character that falls for the other one, but you can still blatantly tell they're enemies. But he was literally like groveling a couple of chapters in and then the rest of the book was just him pining over her. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I just feel like it was a little bit too quick and I feel like with the pure enemies to lovers it needed to go on a little bit longer in order to be a little bit more realistic. In the next lot you'll see me read in my swapping my screen time for reading time. I did that challenge. I read like 40 hours that week. It was traumatic to say the least. But the first book that I read for that video is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I rated this a 4.75 star. And when I tell you this book was so close to being a five star but the ending just sort of took that away from me a little bit. I'm obviously not going to say what the ending is. I'm not going to say what happened to it, but I wanted an alternate ending, unfortunately, and that didn't happen. So I took it down like a quarter of a star, like a little bit. This book follows a character called Carrie Soto. She's the world record holder for tennis. She's literally the most famous women tennis player in the world. She holds this great world record and she decides to retire because she's like, look, my, my work here is done. I don't need to carry on anymore. I've got my world record. I'm just going to sit back and relax because she's 38 years old. Obviously, as athletes get older, they're not able to do what they used to be able to do. So she's happy. She's like, fine, I'm going to I'm going to retire. And then this book starts with her watching a tennis match with her dad. This new young female tennis player breaks Carrie Soto's record. And obviously she's pissed. She's like, hang on a minute. That was my world record. And Carrie's a very I need to win character. She's not like a oh, let someone else take the reins. No, if someone's stealing her world record, best believe she's taking it back. She's a very empowerment. She's very, this is mine and no one can steal it kind of gal. 
So obviously she's nearly 40 years old, so she decides to get her dad to train her again, and you see her journey trying to break this world record again, going through the struggles of being an older woman in sport. She ends up obviously competing with the woman who broke her record in the first place, and oh my goodness, this book, I, it, mind blown, I absolutely loved it. I feel like as well it was really interesting looking at women in sport and women in that industry in the time that this was set in. If you aren't aware a lot of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books are set in like the 70s, 80s. Being a woman in industry like sport obviously would have been really difficult in that time. But the entire book reminded me of the song The Man by Taylor Swift. If you know you know, Carrie Soto is the epitome of that song. It should be her theme tune. If that song was out when she was in the height of her tennis era, the world would have stopped. Honestly, I don't think I could ever be disappointed by Taylor Jenkins Reid. She's honestly my favourite author. I love every single one of her books and I have never been disappointed by her. She's so amazing and now I have no more books to read by her. It's so sad. I cannot wait for her to release more. The next book that I read was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I rated this book a 4.25 and yes, my ratings are getting very, very specific but I just feel like I'm reading so many books and just slapping the same rating on all of them that I'm not giving them exactly what they deserve and I feel like I'm going to get a little bit more picky with my ratings in the future. This story follows a main character called Alexis. She's on the way back from a family funeral and then she ends up having car trouble and then this small town guy called Daniel comes in, saves the day and j just basically helps her with her car and gets her out of that sticky situation. So the main character called Alexis, she comes from a very long line of well-renowned surgeons, very high up in the hospital kind of doctor industry. So her brother and her parents are really famous surgeons and they have this whole big company, they have hospitals named after them and just everything. And obviously everyone that's in the hospital industry knows who they are. It's kind of like the Derek Shepherd kind of thing in Grey's Anatomy, like everyone knows who he is. But Alexis doesn't want to be as high profile as them, she goes for a less profile job. I think she ends up working in like the ER or something like that, which is obviously so well respected, it's such a good job to get into. And she's just as successful as the others, but they don't see it like that. They're like, why would you not want to be the top surgeon? Why? Like her family are quite disappointed in her. And then we have the other main character called Daniel, who's a small town guy, he's a carpenter, he also runs an Airbnb. He just basically has to drag in any money he can get to make ends meet because he's not doing very well. The town in general is just kind of poor. When this couple comes together, you really see the opposites attract trope. Like the opposites attract in this book is just like you get the rich girl from the big high profile family and the small town carpenter, the cute little dog and the goat and stuff. And you just see them come together and they really do struggle with how they're gonna fit into each other's lives. Obviously they wanna be together, that is the thing. They do genuinely want to be a couple but he won't leave his small town and she doesn't want to leave her job for him. Which is obviously why it's called part of your world. They're in very different universes, very different worlds. He's a small town carpenter, she's high profile in the hospital industry and her parents will not let her leave this hospital. Her parents are like, no, this is what you need to do. This is your destiny, this is who you are meant to be. I feel like I really like the small town in this trope. When she was visiting Daniel in his small town, I feel like it reminded me a lot of Gilmore Girls, Stars Hollow, but in like a poor version way. <laughs> I know that's so mean to say, but I don't know, I just feel like it was like the poor version of Stars Hollow, but it was just as cosy, just as cute, and I don't know, I just really rooted for the small town. I loved seeing the characters in the small town. There are definitely a few trigger warnings in this book though. There is physical abuse, there is verbal abuse, emotional abuse, so definitely take that into consideration if you're going to read this book as well, because... I mean, it is quite a heavy topic of the book. I don't think you ever see anything fully happen in the book, but it's definitely a topic of conversation throughout the whole thing. The next book is The Inmate by Frieda McFadden. Frieda McFadden is my favourite thriller author. I absolutely love her books, and I rated this one a 4.75 star. This book follows the main character called Brooke, and she ends up getting a job as a nurse practitioner in a prison. But the prisoner's main rule is to not be friends with any of the inmates. You can't fraternise with them, you can't even talk to them, you've just got to do your job and you've got to leave. You're not allowed to have any close sort of relationship with them whatsoever. But Brooke, it turns out that she actually has a past relationship with one of the inmates. She has history with them and they end up obviously seeing each other in this prison. This book has dual timelines, it has 11 years ago and now, and you sort of just see through both timelines who she has that close relationship with, why he's incarcerated and if he's going to get revenge for the reason that he's incarcerated and stuff and it was just so amazing. I absolutely love Frieda McFadden's writing, I feel like it's just such an easy read but obviously also does focus on some dark stuff as well because it is a thriller, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in these books and it was only 300 pages as well. I do honestly think though that I would read every single thing she writes. If she put her grocery list in front of me, I'm reading it. 
I feel like with thrillers I can kind of struggle sometimes. I feel like a couple of chapters in I'm not really gripped onto the story. But every single Frieda McFadden book that I've read I have absolutely enjoyed from the very first page. If you are thinking of reading one of her books then I highly highly recommend you do. It is soon going to be the spooky months so maybe delve into a Frieda McFadden thriller in those months as well. And the last and most recent book that I read in August was Love Theoretically by Ali Hazelwood. I rated this book a three star and I had a couple of issues with it. I liked some of it and I disliked some of it. So I feel like we're going to get into that now. So if you're not aware and if you've been living under a rock for the past couple of years, Ali Hazelwood does books where they all focus on women in STEM and just the science industry. This is our main character Elsie and she has multiple jobs to make ends meet but her main passion in life is physics. She wants to be a physicist and she wants to progress her career, she wants to do research, she has this one specific thing that she really wants to progress in. But in order to make ends meet and in order to get more money she ends up taking part in this fake dating app i think it is so she basically ends up having to make fake personas fake backgrounds and just fake everything for each client she ends up having the opportunity to interview for a new job this position basically will get her into her career she ends up interviewing for this new position she obviously really wants to get into this career of physics so she has to take this interview however her current client his older brother is the one that sits on the board and makes the decision as to whether she gets the job or not and she ends up having like a little rival with him him and her mentor have like this ongoing thing because they just didn't get on obviously that's one thing that gets in Elsie's way in getting this job it's an enemies to lovers stem romance and I don't know I just I did enjoy it but it definitely wasn't my favorite and I'm gonna tell you why one thing that I liked was that you can tell that the main character didn't have everything figured out and I really like that in books because I feel like a lot of main characters are very put together Elsie, her life was a mess her actual life just was an absolute shambles and it wasn't very good and obviously she had to do all these kind of things to make everything run smoothly. I feel like that made the character a lot more realistic. I feel like it just added more realism to the book and I really appreciated that in Ali Hazelwood's writing. I feel like the enemies to lovers aspect was really realistic as well. For example, in the proposal, I feel like they fell for each other way too quick. Whereas this one, I feel like they fell for each other at a normal pace. It seemed a lot more realistic, which I did appreciate as well. <sighs> this is the one thing that I don't like about the book. And I'm gonna be dead honest with you guys. And this isn't really a spoiler but I was 70% of the way through the book and they hadn't even held hands yet. 70%. I know. Fair enough 60, fair enough 65, I've said this before, but 70% is a bit excessive. When you've got a cover that has two people kissing on the front of it. If this book was marketed to me as a fiction book with a subplot of romance, I would 100% have liked it more, but I went into this thinking that it was gonna be a romance-filled, jam-packed book full of this lust and love between the two main characters. But we're like 75% of the way through and they haven't even kissed yet. Are you kidding me? Again, if I knew that going into it, I would have enjoyed this book a lot more. I feel like with her other books, the Love Hypothesis and Love on the Brain, the romance was very present from the first couple of chapters. You could really tell, and I was really rooting for the characters from literally the first point. But I feel like with this one, there was no romance pretty much. You could tell that the relationship was gonna progress. You can tell that they started to sort of flirt with each other and fancy each other and stuff, but literally nothing happened and the book was nearly finished. What is the point? I think fair enough if you're gonna do that, but don't have two people kissing on the front cover because it's very misleading into thinking it's more romance based. But I do feel like that was my only issue. I feel like it was written very well. Ali Hazelwood's writing is so easy to read. You get gripped from the very start, but I just think that it could have been a little bit more romancy. But that is all the books that I managed to read in the month of August. I'm so excited for my September reads. I'm so excited to start my September TBR and just all the autumn vibes. I cannot wait because honestly, autumn is like my favorite time of year ever. Let me know how many books that you read in August and let me know your favorite one. Let me know a five star read that you may have had and I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.